okay. Good evening, visionary leaders, and I am excited to be in this meeting with you. Now, I was particularly excited to see that readers' um, life expectancy is increased by two years. So I don't know what years, how many years I had, but I'm excited that I've got two more um, added to that. And everyone in the room um, has got two years, and that's something to be excited about. Now, as we have just gone through our program for this afternoon, we have got um, we've got six uh, reviews that um, we are going to receive. Um, starting us off will be Dumi Sibanda uh, reviewing her own book. All right, let's hear. Let's have it for Dumi. Let's clap our hands. Dumi, can we get a review of your book? You are enough. I love it. Over to you. Thank you so much, Kululua, for that welcome. And thank you to all the readers that are online. And thank you for welcoming me on your platform. And as indicated, I'll be reviewing my own book. It's called You Are Enough. So this book is really targeted at anyone who's had um, a battle with this monster that I am talking about in this book. So this book is about a monster that really holds your life back. It's an internal battle that if you don't win that battle, your dreams will be on hold, your life will be on hold, your relationships will not be complete, your career will be stuck, and your business will not thrive. Because wherever you go, there you are. You are the person that is an ingredient to ensure that your relationships, your career, your business succeed. So if this internal battle, you don't win or you don't take control of it, you will not be able to move forward. You will be stuck in a rut. So the book is about an internal battle that I call feeling inadequate. All of us have gone through um, moments where we doubt ourselves, where we doubt our abilities, uh, where we also doubt whether we are the right person when you have been put in a position. You ask yourself, am I the person to do this job? Am I capable? Can I do this right? And always doubting whether you can actually do what is required of you. And if this internal battle is not uh, taken hold of and you take control, it may lead to imposter syndrome. And probably many of you on this call are familiar with imposter syndrome and how it steals um, your dreams and how it actually keep you in a stagnated state. Now in this book, I, I have divided the book into five parts, right? When you look, uh, when you get the book, I know you're all going to get the book. When you do get the book, um, in part one, I say, I, I talk about meeting the monster. So you, I, I, I'm introducing you to this monster. So you understand what does it look like? Because maybe you don't know that you are battling this internal battle of feeling inadequate. So I introduce you to this mon monster. So you meet the, the opponent. And then in part two, I introduce you to the different faces that the monster has. In other words, where does it operate? You know, in what kind of settings does it operate? In families, in your jobs, in your relationships, in all the kind of inter interactions that you, interact, you find yourself interacting um, with people around you. So that's part two, it looks at the faces of this monster. So what does it look like and how does it show up? And uh, in part three, I talk about how you can actually overcome this monster. You know, every book that we write, it's very nice to have lessons as to the, what the how-to is. And I, I actually take you to practical ways of overcoming this monster. And in part five, uh, I take you through different voices from my own. So I, have, I had invited a number of writers or 
contributors to contribute their own stories on how they have actually experienced self-doubt in their lives and how they can actually, how they have actually overcome the imposter syndrome or self-doubt or the feelings of inadequacy in their lives. And then the last part, I call it um, a bonus. It's a gift to the reader. It's called the Rewire Your Brain. So it's an online program where you go into that program on a daily basis for 21 days, rewiring your mind to ensure that you are able to start being practical in ensuring that you are the con you are in control when it comes to living your life without feeling inadequate or ensuring that whenever you step into places and you find yourself feeling um, inadequate, what to do so that you find yourself in control. So in a nutshell, that's what the book is about. Now, what you will take away from this book as a highlight is to understand the seed of uh, feelings of inadequacy. So where do the feelings of inadequacy come from and at what stages do they get planted into our subconscious mind? And you're also going to understand what are the kind of problems that feeling inadequate creates for you as an individual, for you in what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So you have internal problems, and then you've got external problems. And then also what kind of problems this monster causes in society. For example, when you look at a number of social ills that we have um, in society, a, a key one being gender-based violence, you can trace back to feelings of inadequacy on the perpetrator's uh, side. So you will understand the kind of problems feeling inadequate can cause in our lives. And when you have that understanding, I also take you through the understanding of the kind of beliefs that have been planted into us from a young age or through the experiences, even in our adult life, through the experiences that we go through, how we get programmed or how our subconscious mind gets programmed and how you can actually reprogram your subconscious mind so that you are able to win the battle against feeling um, inadequate. Once you have that understanding, you are equipped with awareness. And once you've got awareness, the next thing is then, what do I do? And that's where the practical tips come in, where you can work on yourself, coach yourself to overcome feelings of inadequacy. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love it. Um, this sounds like a book that I definitely um, want to read. Before we take, I see that we have got Friedak, um, and I'm assuming that's a question. Um, let's allow Friedak, uh, let's give you the platform. I once met a man at the airport and he, I was reading a book. I forgot the name, the title of the book. It was a self-help book as well. And he was like, young girl, why do you bother with these books? These books won't make you money. They are useless. You must buy business books, buy books that will make you money, books that will make you rich. And I'm like, what's the use of having money? But you have internal traumas and pains that you are dealing with. You know, you can't make money if you don't feel complete and adequate and adequate. So yeah, but my question to you is, is the book based on your your experiences, your life story, what you went through, or is it um, something that you studied and yeah, is, is it based on research or is it your, your life story? Thank you. Thanks Frida, it's a combination um, of all the, those three. So I am a life and business coach and I've been coaching since 2011. Um, and through my coaching journey, I noticed that this monster has been having an impact on my clients. And I, I, I undertook to look at what it is that keeps my clients stuck 
when people come to me and say we need uh, coaching, what is it that keeps them stuck? And when I'm working with them, what is it that is keeping them you know, from advancing? And I noticed that childhood traumas, like as you put it, is what keeps people uh, from moving. And the more I went underneath this, I realized that imposter syndrome is actually an issue in people's lives. But as I went even deeper, um, I realized that it's not just imposter syndrome because imposter syndrome is when your feeling of inadequacy is a constant in your life. But I realized that there are people who do from time to time just suffer from uh, self-doubt that keeps them from moving. And it, it's a habit that they have formed over time to, to keep themselves um, from taking advantage of opportunities to hold themselves back. So how the mind works, because in the book I also talks about how, I talk about how the mind works. So, and then that prompted me to look at my own um, experience to say, how has this really worked um, or taken root in my life? And then I wrote this book in hindsight, looking at my life in hindsight. So the book is a combination of my story and my experiences in hindsight and my clients' um, experiences and also what I got to um, learn and read about uh, as I was doing research on the topic. I hope that answers your question, Frida. Thank you. To me, um, can you just tell us quickly, how can we get hold of the book? Thank you, Kululo. Um, the, the book can be accessed from my online shop, um, www.coachingfordreams. And there's an online shop on my website there. And you'll find all my books there. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you to me. And now we are moving right along to Chanel, who will be reviewing um, In the Unlikely Event Of, which is a book by Judy Blue. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share. Um, my name is Chanel and I'm from Cape Town. And just before I start, um, one of my learners is supposed to be doing a book review, but I'm not sure if she logged in from someone else's phone. So if she could maybe just put it in the chat, then we'll know that, that Tanya is there. Um, but the book that I've read is called In the Unlikely, Unlikely Event by Judy Bloom. Um, she's one of my favorite childhood authors. I've been reading her book since I've been in primary school. Um, but this is the first novel that, of, um, from her that I've read as an adult. And I don't know if it's maybe even a first novel for adults. Um, but the book is set between the years 1952 and 1987. And it is, the setting is in New Jersey, Elizabeth, and it's actually based on real events. It's based, it's fiction, but it's based on this author's real life events, where um, it was based in a time when travel, airline travel was new. And um, within three months, Miri Ammerman, she's the main character, she witnesses firsthand, she witnesses three plane crashes in 1952. And, and that's what the, what the book hinges on, is her experiences and the community um, of New Jersey, their experiences. Um, she weaves, Judy Bloom weaves a tale about um, different people, but Mary Emmerman, she is the, she's the main character in the book and everything hinges around her. And, um, the, her uncle is a news reporter and he reports on these actual events of what happened. And we gain insight into the characters on the plane, the characters um, in the community. And then um, many people died on these, um, in these um, plane crashes and um, people died um, in the airplane and also on the ground. And it, it's so sad. It really is a haunting tale, especially more so because it's a true tale. And, um, it's it's quite complex because there are so many characters that we that we we meet, um, and and the themes ranges from love, young love, Mary experiences young love as a teenager. So there's that coming of age, rites of passage um, aspect to it. But there's also themes like um, anorexia, her best friend. Um, she experiences anorexia, even though her family is wealthy. So. Um, and, and their lives are seemingly perfect. There's also um, some deception in the way in which people present themselves. 
So that's one aspect. And then obviously disappointment for many. And then death, which seems to be the, the theme that hangs over the entire book, is that we get to meet characters and then they pass away. And it's it's quite sad because it's like I said, it's based on true events. But there's also the aspect of um of careers because of the, the fact that there are lots of journalists reporting on these stories, even airline careers, there's the the um the air hostess, the pilots, and their experiences within this crash and um even the school children, what they experience, what they think the causes of the plane crashes are. So it's it's quite a, a wonderful but sad um, tale. And the atmosphere that I, I can tell is that it's it's frightening for, for all the people that's experiencing it, but also how it brings people together, unlikely friendships and that type of thing. That's basically what the novel is about. All right, thank you, thank you, Chanel. Do we have a question for Chanel? Um, just quickly chatting, looking at the chat. I don't see a question, guys, um, and there is no hand up. In the likely, in the unlikely event of, that is very scary. I mean, you're talking about flying, and when you get in there, they give you all the reassurances, but in the unlikely event of carbon pressure, you know, going down, it is, it sounds like an interesting book, um, which actually gives us the the skills to cope under these uh, circumstances. Sibongiseni, uh, thanks to me. Okay, that's not a question for Chanel. All right, thank you for that review, Chanel. Um, and uh, how do we get hold of the book? Can we, oh, do you know where it's available? It's available at lots of bookstores, exclusive books, and it's even av available at the library. This copy I got at the library. Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. And we are moving along to the next review. Okay. So um, the name of my story is Ella Enchanted. And the story is about a girl called Ella who had a curse of obedience. And eight main characters in the story. The first one is Ella herself. Ella is smart, brave, kind, and has a gift of languages. Unfortunately, she also has another gift, a gift from the sender which has just about ruined her Ella, Ella's poor life. The sender is a fairy who loves to show off her magic. And this also, Lady Elena. Lady Elena is Ella's gentle, loving, and protective mother. There's also Sir Peter. Sir Peter is Ella's father, and he is a cola man who often travels and likes money more than his family. Mandy. Mandy is Mandy is the cook for for Ella's family and Ella's god Ella's fairy godmother. And then there's um, Prince Cha is the heir to Korea and a close friend of Alice. And then there's Dame Olga. Dame Olga is fat and somewhat rich wom woman who, who has nasty two daughters. She becomes Alice's stepmother stepmother and treats Ella like a servant. Ella's father Sir Peter is in his own depth and he as such decides to marry on Dame Olga means to as means to pay them off. At the wedding Lucinda gifts Dame Olga and Sir Peter the gift of always loving each other. And theme, the themes of the story is um, obedience, love, and willpower. And this, and the recommendation of the book is, I would recommend this book to preteens and preens too. And I'd also give it a five-star rating. Wow, that is amazing. 
love, obedience, and more. I think you so much um, for that review. I see that Chanel's hand is up. Chanel, your hand was up before the review was done. So I don't know if you wanted to ask a question or a comment on that review. I just wanted to say that Tanya won the Grow Smart Story Writing Competition. And she's actually a published author as of last week. She won the competition, so I'm very proud of her. So she wrote her own story, and it's been published. That's all I wanted to share. Mm. Oh, that's amazing, Jai Class. Yeah. Congratulations, Tanya. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You are in good company, Tanya, because we have got um, published authors in this platform, and we are looking forward to hearing you review your own book. Um, do we have any other questions, uh, actually? Yes, I do have one. All right, Simone. Hi, Tanya. Thank you for the review. My question is simple. I just want to know how old are you and what grade are you in? I see you are on your school uniform. Um, I'm in grade five and I'm only 11. Wow. wow. Amazing. No, I am definitely intrigued. I would love to hear you review your book. Um, hopefully in the next, because the, the November slot is uh, already full, um, in December, hopefully we can hear about your book. Okay. <laughs> and then, thank you so much, uh, Tanya. Okay, Tina. My book is a non-fiction book. Its title is Wars Within. Wars Within is a book inspired by um, helping teens and parents get along together. Last year, I was experiencing some emotional pain. As when Lula was in, I was experiencing stuff that I didn't want to experience at school, at home. So when my when I saw my mother writing a book, its name is is a portion by the womb of democracy. I wanted to write my own, to express myself, to express myself to the world, to express myself to my peers, to my teachers, to my family. Was Within is a book with five chapters and uh, 80, 81 pages. It's a small book if I, if I consider it, but it's what I wanted to write. Was Within is... Uh, I wrote words within to express, especially to my mother, how I feel. Words within is about teens. As a teenager, we go through tough times. We go through trials and tribulations in life, in school, in at home. It's our. It's about how our family, how our peers, how our surroundings affect each other, affect us as individuals, how they affect our decisions, our opinions, our views, our values. Um, as, as I was writing this book last year, I was thinking to myself, why is life like this and like this and like this and like this and like this? And I had very much, and I very, a lot of different questions Sorry, you can hear by my tone that I'm very nervous. Um, I wanted to express myself to the world. I wanted to express myself to my mother. Uh, Was Within is about teens. It, it, it's, it's a non-fiction. So I'm telling you about what teens are going through and what parents don't see. Parents don't see that we are a new generation. We don't, we don't react differently to problems um we seem to have lost utina and um let's um thank him for that review it is quite an interesting book and i am certain that um a number of us uh, on the platform is I, I would too you know being a mother of teenagers uh, myself can we then move on to dr mclean sibanda who is uh, reviewing um a book by Musibudi, Musibudi Mangena, We Can Fix Ourselves. Dr. McLean, over to you. Uh, good, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be uh, back on this platform. 
Yeah, so the book that I'm reviewing is uh, We Can Fix Ourselves uh, by Musibu Di Mangena. It's quite difficult, yeah. So that's the book. I uh, recently published, uh, published about a month ago, uh, honored to, uh, to have worked with, um, uh, with uh, Minister Mangena when he was Minister of Science and Technology. The crux of the book is in essence, uh, I think a fresh look at black consciousness. Uh, and in particular, looking at the challenges that we face uh, as a people, uh, and in particular, black people in this country. In the book, uh, he starts off in essence narrating how uh, health workers went on strike, not for a salary increase, but for a bonus and prevented their fellow uh, workers from looking after patients. Uh, and as a result, uh, people died. And in essence, he builds up a theme that runs across a book, which says that we don't love ourselves enough uh, as black people. Uh, he then uh, goes through uh, various uh, challenges. He looks at education, uh, and he looks uh, at uh, state-owned enterprises. He goes on to look at fashion, uh, look at, looking at food. Uh, he looks at the land issue. Uh, he looks at crime. Uh, he also goes in and looks at uh, immigration. Uh, and I think some of the challenges that we face currently uh, you know, with the hashtag South Africa Fest. Uh, he also looks at local government. Uh, and, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the, the whole thing around corruption, he summarizes what uh, George Orwell say that um, we deserve no sympathy for electing corrupt politicians, imposters, thieves and traitors. We are not victims, but we are accomplices, according to him. Uh, in the book, uh, you know, in essence, he, he not only does he uh, go into some of the challenges, but he, he brings across a black consciousness uh, thinking and solutions to some of these particular uh, issues. The one thing that uh, is also quite comes across very strongly in the book is the fact that we are in charge. We being uh, the majority of this country, which is uh, in essence uh, black uh, people. Uh, and he says that black consciousness is akin to Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, W-I-F-I, which does nothing by itself. However, its presence gives those covered by its connectivity the ability to engage in activities that are tangible and useful uh, in life. He also um, has quite an interesting perspective around languages um, and the fact that we are probably one of the few nations uh, in the world that does not educate uh, its people through its own languages. Uh, he looks at the township economy and how the moles in essence have taken over uh, what would be township uh, uh, businesses. Uh, and it's, so it's, a, it's, it's a book that I, it, when I read it, it made me rethink. It made me also get a fresh perspective uh, in terms of looking at state-owned enterprises and why we have the challenges that we have. But also, it made me realize that the solution to many of the challenges that we face as a country, as a people, uh, lie, in essence, in our hands. And hence, the title, We Can Fix uh, Ourselves. So it's a book that I recommend that everyone uh, reads. Uh, it is available at exclusive uh, books and uh, many uh, you know, other book uh, stores. Uh, it's an easy read. Um, I, I finished it in less than two days. It's about 200 pages. Uh, and um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's really highly recommended. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kululu. Uh, thank you, Doc. Um, that is an amazing um, book. I am quite um, keen to, um, to get my hands on it. Um, on the platform, do we have any questions, comments um, for that uh, book review? Frida, um, 
Thank you, Sis Kulu. It's not a question, but a comment. I joined the Facebook review of the book with Dr. Mac McLean and Prof. Sivan Prof. Manyan. And yeah, because the time was, uh, they had allocated, oh, my camera is not on. They had um, allocated a bit of time for the review. So it was really great to hear the review from Prof. Manyana because he broke it down from the history and yeah, everything. So yeah, I think it's a really great book for all of us to get and to read and yeah, thank you. Thank you, Frida. Absolutely. I think that if um, all of us, or at least the majority of us read uh, this type of book, um, we can actually start the work to heal ourselves because there is a lot of work that we need to do as a society. Okay, and then next up we have got Unzo Agi Sibia who will be reviewing um, Everyone Communicates, You Connect by John Maxwell. Unzo Agi, over to you. Thank you so much, Sison. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, we can hear you. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, everybody. I'm quite excited to be part of the program this evening. Um, so tonight I will be reviewing a book by John C. Maxwell. It's called Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. And John C. Maxwell is one of my favorite um, thought leaders and one of my favorite authors and leadership experts. Um, a bit of background about myself. I am an entrepreneur and a business leader in the security sector, in the private security sector. And as somebody who's a public figure, I'm often asked to come and, um, or I'm invited to, to speak at, at many events. And what I used to find in, in, in throughout the years is that um, I'm confident, I'm bold. So public speaking is not something that makes me cringe per se. However, after each and every speech, I always used to have this sense or this feeling that nobody understood me or understood my message or actually really gets me. And so I used to start thinking that, I started thinking that perhaps I don't articulate myself well. And that's when I decided to embark on a journey, a reading journey and specifically reading books on communication and business leadership with the hope that I would be able to articulate myself better. And that's when I came across this book by John C. Maxwell. And it's quite an incredible book because it enlightened me in terms of, it gave me a different perspective in terms of what my actual problem was. And the issue was an issue of connecting. I was communicating well, I was communicating fluently, but I struggled with connecting with my audience. And so um, John C. Maxwell says that if you want to succeed in anything, you must learn to connect with people because the ability to connect with people and others determines um, how you will reach your fullest potential. So I believe that, you know, I strongly believe that and I agree with that. And I think connecting is the skill that many leaders, we take for granted because we assume that it happens organically when you stand up and speak that you'll automatically connect with people. However, the ability to engage and to add value and to, to tug at the strings of the hearts of your audience, you, you literally need to have the skill to connect with them and that takes time and that takes practice as well so I absolutely love this book um, in the book Mr. Maxwell shares five principles and um, five practices that will allow you to to powerfully connect with your audience whether you are in any environment whether you're public speaking whether you're in the workplace um, he shares five crucial skills in terms of how to connect with the people that you work with. And amongst all leadership books that I have read, I must say that it's one of those books that have really made an impact on me as a business leader and an aspiring speaker as well. So I would certainly advise that anybody who is 
aspiring to be a speaker or aspiring to be in business leadership um, reads the book. It's quite a gem. You can find it at any of the bookstores, exclusive books on Mr. Maxwell's um, website as well. So I thought with the last minute query to do a book review, this was one of the books that I would recommend anybody to consider reading. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nzoagi. All right. Do we have any questions, comments uh, for Nzoagi's review? Subongiseni? All right. Thank you, Madam MC, and thank you, Nzoagi, for that beautiful review. So your book reminded me of this one that I read recently. I don't, okay, I don't seem like it's visible, but it's called convince them in 90 seconds. So basically this book is about convincing and convincing and connecting with your audience as yours was actually talking more on the connecting connecting part with the audience. So you also mentioned that you, the book by John C. Maxwell is about how to connect now, it shares five principles. So as here, I was interested in hearing what are those specific principles that John C. Maxwell is sharing that makes you as the speaker to connect with your audience. So from this book, for instance, the author says, one of the things that most leaders in, the, in, in different fields seems to forget is the power of storytelling. Because when you tell stories, especially personal stories, that is one, one of the best ways you can connect with your audience. Because when you tell personal stories, other people can relate to your own stories. And then they stories tend to open their hearts. And that's how the connections work in terms of in, evoking emotions in them. So I just wanted to hear maybe in the, in, if John C. Maxwell is touching base in terms of storytelling and also what maybe if you can remember, what are the other, maybe one or two other principles that he's sharing that you should use as a speaker to connect with your audience? Thank you for your question. So um, basically the five principles that um, John Maxwell touches on um, in terms of connecting with your audience. First and foremost, he speaks about finding common ground with people. Um, in this aspect, it, it's a matter of, you know, like you, you just said, storytelling. When, when you want to connect with people, or when you're trying to connect with people, it's always best for you to be the listener, you know, so that you can find common ground with people in, in that aspect. Another one that he's mentioned is keeping your communication simple. I, I find that with me as well, especially when you're in the business world and you're trying to speak to people, you're usually using industry jargon instead of keeping your communication simple so that the next person can actually understand in layman's term what it is that you are speaking about. So we often get lost in industry jargon and big words that people don't understand. And that's where you lose the connection with people as well. Um, the third one is capturing people's interest. And that's where the thinking, um, um, not the thinking, my apologies. And that's where the listening skills come in, in terms of listening to other people and not always trying to be the one who's speaking and making, um, putting your point across. Also, when it comes to speaking engagements as well, always great idea to do research on your audience. Who are they? What are they about? That sort of thing so that you're able to, to capture those particular people's interests and not what you think will interest those people. Um, inspiring people is, the, is, 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 the, is another one. Um, were you speaking to inspire other people, you know, um, staying authentic in everything you do. And I suppose that's where storytelling comes in as well. You know, your authentic story is, is what captures people. And when you telling your story authentically, people are more likely to be drawn and engaged into what it is that you are trying to say, you know, and then the last one is, is about obviously building the relationship from the bottom up. You know, as leaders, often we forget that we're supposed to be leading through people. You're, tr you're always trying to speak on, on a level of being at the top of the pyramid and you're not speaking or leading through those people. So um, I suppose your relationship building skills as well is, is how you, you would then connect with your audience or connect with the next person. I hope that answers your question. 
Yes, thank you so much, Nzogi. That answers thank my question. You. Perfect. I thoroughly enjoyed today's session. I loved internal work and, um, you know, the reviews on today's book, um, you know, you are enough. Um, in the unlikely event of dealing with the wars within. Uh, these are all, you know, amazing books that help us to work on ourselves. And then we can move on to the next bit where we start to look at finances, you know, making money. And this is what we are looking forward to in our next meeting on the 28th of November, where the Books that are going to be reviewed are talking about finances, and I am looking forward to that. Once we are well within and we have dealt with our inner issues, we are that much stronger. We have fixed ourselves, and then we move on to tackle the things outside of us. Our Thank you to all our reviewers, and thank you to our audience uh, in here. Yes, thank you for a great meeting. Good evening. Mm -hmm.